and welcome to Julian Films A Bunch of Videos All in One Day. Today's video was brought to you by Twitter, I'm pretty sure is where I got the idea for this one. Someone on Twitter was complaining that there are a bazillion videos with tips for how to plot a novel, but basically none with tips for how to pants a novel. And I mean that kind of makes sense because plotting tends to be very structured, so it's easy to be like, here are a bunch of structures, find the one that works for you. But I decided to take up the challenge. Could I make a tip video for pantsers? Yes. I, I mean, yes, like, you're here. So, before we get started though on my couple of little tips here, I do want to remind everyone that just like there are many, many ways to plot a novel, no two pantsers are alike either. I suppose I should explain what a pantser is. Some people don't like the term, some people prefer discovery writer, or like, I think I've heard like gardener or something like that, I don't know. Plotters are people who plot their book. They plan things out. They have the structure figured out. They use any number of things up to and including sticky notes, notes in a notebook, or even a whole document where they plan out their book. Pantsers we write by the seat of our pants, meaning we often don't know big or small details when going into writing. We just dive straight in, which makes it a very personal experience. And I think that might be part of the problem of why it's tough to make tips videos for pantsers, because we're all a little bit different. So there aren't really like named methods like save the cat when it comes to pantsing. Anyway, where I'm going with this is just because these are my tips, they might not work for you because we just might have a very different styles with the way that we pants a book. Am I gonna say pantsing enough times in this video to finally make it sound silly even to me? Because I will grant you that it sounds silly, and I think that's why some people don't like it. But I embrace the silliness, so let's see if I can make myself hate it. I have never plotted a book even one time in my entire life. The thought of doing so makes me want to vomit. Like, the thought of sitting down and plotting out a book before I just write it seems like the most counterintuitive and ridiculous thing ever, which is probably how my method sounds to people who are hardcore plotters. They probably look at me and go, that sounds absolutely absurd. I don't know how you get anything done. But friends, I have not only finished a book, I have finished many, many books using this method. So in no particular order, these are my tips. Again, just tips. They won't work for every book and you might not be able to use all of these tips in the same book. These are my tips for pantsing your book. The first tip that works for me is Knowing how much I do need to plan ahead, like my ending. I do tend to have my ending planned, although not completely, we'll talk about that in a minute. I do know how I want the story overall to come to a close. What is my ultimate goal with the story? I don't know any of the nitty gritty fine details, but I do know where I'm headed. Oftentimes there will also be a couple of scenes that come to me that I know have to be in the story somewhere, and I will plan to put them in. So this video is a little bit all over the place, and I kind of didn't finish this thought, but I should bring it back around to what the actual tip is. And my actual tip is know about yourself, what key points you have to know ahead of time to finish a story. And if you're struggling to finish, maybe that means you do have to know a few things ahead of time, such as a few key scenes, what character arcs you might want to have, or what the ending is going to be roughly. It doesn't have to, it can be very, very sketched out and not in detail at all, just so you know what you're heading towards. Tip number two is to be a daydreamer. I know that one sounds silly and probably all writers are daydreamers, but I spend so much of my time just thinking about what my next scene is going to be. And if everything's plotted out, that leaves a lot less room for daydreaming for me. So if I know I want to head in some direction, I could completely change my mind in a fit of daydreaming one day and take the book in a new, even better direction. Also, I just spend a lot of time thinking out plot holes, thinking about things that I know aren't going to work, but I know I can fix. My next tip is to think of problems as much as you think of solutions. Now, this is a tip that I sometimes struggle with. Me, personally, as a pantser, sometimes I can make things a little bit too easy on my characters because I love them and I want them to have happy lives. But one thing that you do have to focus on is making sure that your characters run into enough 
problems. I need to spend equal time thinking of ways for them to get into situations as them to get out of situations. And my memory card is running out of space. I'll be right back once I empty that. A few moments later. And I'm back. I missed my big memory card. It died and now I have to use this little one. Not nearly as much space. My next tip for pantsing is to follow your characters. For me, the characters make the story. It's the characters that show up first and demand that I write them an entire world and plot. Every time new characters show up, I create the world for them. Some people create a world first and give it characters. I do the opposite. But even if you are more world focused, definitely look to your characters to guide the story because their actions and their reactions are going to be the things that keep things moving. As a pantser, I feel more like a scribe than anything else. I'm just watching my characters go through things and writing down their adventures. My next tip is to trust your instincts. This is another one where I rambled and got off track, so I'm correcting it in post. Also, if you hear noises, Nigel is here on my lap. Anyway, what I meant to say in a hopefully more concise manner is that a lot of times when I'm drafting, I will include things that I might use later in the story. And trusting myself to put in things that will be good for the story later is a key part of my process. More often than not, the thing that I use is actually useful foreshadowing. I sort of foreshadow instinctively now, and while there are definitely some things that I end up not using and taking out of the final version, way more things are actually things that get left in and used later because I trust myself and my instincts when it comes to drafting like that. One thing that people love to tell me when I tell them that I am a pantser is that, oh, you pantsers, you just have to edit a lot more later. You have to trim more, you have to make more tweaks, and I have no idea if that's true or not, but the way I see it all of us have to edit. Every single author, no matter how carefully you plot, you are going to have to edit. So it doesn't really matter to me who has to edit more or less. It seems like a silly thing to say is a downside. With a lot of practice though, I feel I have gotten better at knowing what I'm going to keep and throw away, and so some ideas I already scrap before I even write them down. And sometimes even as I am panting my way through a book, I might go and delete a scene that I know just isn't going to work with the direction the story is going now, and that's perfectly okay. And my final tip, and again, this is kind of just the way that I do things, but if there were sort of classifications for us pantsers. If we did have like methods that had names, my method I think would be called the D&D method. I view myself as the GM for my characters. I get them into situations and then see how they get themselves out of those situations. I also GM tabletop games, and when I do, I often don't have a clear plan of how I expect the players to get out of situations, or deal with situations that I've thrown at them, because I like to let them come up with it on their own. Going in with too many expectations, I feel like ruins the experience for everyone. So that's the way I treat my books, too. I'm just GMing a very big and elaborate game of D&D for my characters. For example, a lot of times with my endings, I know what I want to happen, but I have no idea how the characters are going to figure out the situation. But they'll figure it out when they get there. Technically, I'll figure it out when they get there. Again, a lot of people are bothered when we talk about our characters as though they're real. But yeah, I just throw them into those scenarios and see how they deal with it. Which I feel probably lends itself really well to my very character-focused style. So if you're a bit like me and you found anything I've been saying here resonating today, then maybe you can use some of these tips in your own work. One thing I will say though is that if you find that you don't like pantsing and you want to move over to try plotting, that's perfectly fine. There's not sides. You don't have to be like, oh, I'm a plotter and those pantsers are bad, or oh, I'm a pantser and those plotters have no idea how to really write. All of this weird elitism that we have in the writing community needs to go away. 
Just accept that everybody writes a little bit differently and what works for one person doesn't work at all for the next person. And it's okay if you want to try plotting or heck, if you've been a plotter and you want to try pantsing. Thanks so much for watching. I hope some of these tips were helpful to you. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below. I might do another video like this. If you're a fellow pantser, leave your favorite tips, things that have helped you out down below as well. Don't forget that you can find my books available now on Amazon. Amazon links in the doobly-doo as well as links to all of my social media and to my Patreon where you can help me self-publish my own books. Thanks so much for watching and I will see all of you again next time with whatever it is I happen to be doing next time. Bye! Who are you? No one of consequence. I must know. My 96, Unicorn Jenny, Callison, SV, Celia, Taya, Alyssa, Rita, Deborah, Afra, Melissa, AC, Swamp Goblin Waifu, Ashley, Sophia, Merween, Kit, Hidden Glade, Light Julie, Belle, Patrick, and Sophie, Ray, Shelby, Zaire, Jesper, Rennie, Scribbling Cat, Savvy, Jenny, Amanda, Lisa, and Sarah. I am the writer, writer of fictions. I am the heart that you call home. And I've written pages upon pages trying to rid you from my